when you first read the Pentagon Papers, what do you think, and why do you think it was so important for the public to have access to what you were able to read? Well, the Pentagon Papers, for any of you below a certain age, <laughs> uh, uh, were 21 volumes of material commissioned by the then Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara. Uh, in, uh, basically, he asked that it be put together for him in the late 1960s uh, to sort of answer the question, how did we become involved in the war in Vietnam? Now, one could say maybe we should have asked those questions before we became involved in the war in Vietnam. But in any event, Secretary McNamara asked the Defense Department to put together by putting a lot of scholars together to write this summary of starting 1945, right after World War II ended, of, of how the U.S. gradually and then with ever greater speed became involved uh, in the war in Vietnam. And to this at a time when the war was not going well, when our entry into it had become very controversial, when trying to get out of it was very, very difficult. Uh, and when I was retained in 1971, when the New York Times was provided with a copy of all but three volumes of the, what became known as the Pentagon Papers by a confidential source, um, the government had advised the Times that if they published this, and it was all classified as top secret, that the government would take steps, that the government would go to court to get a court order barring the Times from doing so. So that, that's sort of the background uh, of the case. Again, every document in all these volumes was classified as a top secret, which is, at least in theory, the highest, most secret sort of material uh, that there is. Um, and when I became involved, the case was so rushed. Uh, uh, the government asked for a prior restraint, a court order, an injunction against the Times publishing any more of what was in this study uh, than they had already published. That when you asked me when I first read the Pentagon Papers, I didn't read the Pentagon Papers till the case was over. Uh, I read parts of the Pentagon Papers and those were the parts that the government claimed were dangerous uh, because that was the basis of their going to court. They said if this is published in the middle of a war, it will frustrate our efforts to end the war and otherwise harm national security. And so our job uh, in defending the Times was to persuade the courts that that was not so or that even if it was potentially so, that it was so important that, that the press be able to publish information and views and the like about the war that no injunction should be entered. And that's how it all began, and that was our thinking from the time it began. Why was it so important that the public have access to it, that it was published? Right. What was important about it is that it really showed that there had been a great deal of duplicity uh, of our government uh, to our people, uh, mostly in simply not telling them that we were getting more involved and more involved and more involved uh, uh, in, in the war, um, and uh, otherwise simply not presenting the full or maybe even anything like a fair picture of the situation there uh, at the time we became really very actively uh, involved in the war. The Pentagon Papers ended in 1968. Uh, that was the cutoff date. Uh, so the case was in good part historical in nature. The case is 1971. The Pentagon Papers run from 1945 to 1968. And one of the things we were saying throughout was, look, this is history. This isn't what's happening today. You don't have to worry so much that something terrible is going to happen on the ground, that we're going to lose a battle, that we're not going to be able to end the war, whatever. Uh, 
And it's always seemed to me one of the most startling things about it is that we really lost the battle to persuade the Supreme Court that no harm would come. A majority on the court thought it would be harmful, but they weren't sure enough, and they certainly weren't sure that it would be very harmful. And when they put that against the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, they said, you can go ahead and publish it. We can't, won't, don't think we have the power or ought to say we have the power uh, to keep a newspaper from publishing news.